Azuma Nelson from Africa and Jeff Finnick from Australia. Tonight, they reach for superstar status here in the United States. This champion from Ghana takes great pride in representing his country every time he defends his title. This challenger's exploits in the ring have made him a folk hero in his native Australia. Las Vegas is the place that boxers journey to in search of stardom. An impressive performance under these neon lights can enhance the reputation of any fighter, even a two-time world champion like Azuma Nelson. Jeff Fennick has won world titles in three different weight classes without leaving Australia. He has come to America in search of title number four and worldwide fame. This is the fight uh, capital of the world, and uh, to really achieve what I what every fighter wants to, you have to fight in America. You know, um, although I've been on American television a couple of times, I think this is a big step, and it's a major step, and I think once I'm successful in this fight, you know, I think other doors will open, and I think I'll finally get the recognition that I deserve. The career goal of the Thunder from Down Under is to retire undefeated and win five world titles. It took only seven professional fights for Fennec to capture his first championship. His ferocious style made him a crowd favorite and brought excitement to the bantamweight division. In 1986, he relinquished his bantamweight crown because he could no longer make the 118-pound limit. By the following year, Fennec was stalking the world's top super bantamweight boxers. When his thunder struck the new weight class, Jeff Fennec became a two-time champ. The featherweight title was added to his collection in 1988. He was realizing his dream of multiple championships. In order to become the fourth man in boxing history to win more than three world titles, Fennec must defeat a fighter that has reigned over the super featherweights for four years. This is time for Zuma Nancy to prove to the old world that I'm the best in the world. You cannot take my title away from me. There's no way. I'm going, uh, you know I'm going to knock you out, don't you? Nelson has good reason to be confident. He's faced the very best super featherweights and featherweights. He lost his first bid for a world title when he was stopped in the 15th round by the late great Salvador Sanchez. The second opportunity Nelson got at the title, he responded in championship fashion. Has knocked out Alfredo Bowman in the 11th round. After dominating the featherweights, this African warrior went to battle against the super featherweights. To this day, he has never lost a fight in this weight class. Nelson vacated the super featherweight title to challenge lightweight king Pernell Whitaker. After losing a 12-round decision to Whitaker, Nelson had his second loss. He bounced back to regain the title he vacated. Nelson's nickname is the Terrible Warrior. A more accurate pseudonym would be the Proud Warrior. He's a two-time champion with an overall record of 33-2 with 24 knockouts. His record in championship fights an impressive 13-2. I'm proud that uh, man. Uh, I'm a world champion, you know, and I've defended my title, you know, several times, and I'm still a champion. I'm still going on. I'm still strong, you know. I'm proud of that. I'm cool and calm, you know, but in the ring I'm bad. Jeff Fennick's career outside the ring has been anything but calm. He survived the mean streets of Marrickville in Australia, management problems, and chronic pain in his fists that forced him into a temporary retirement. I'd like to announce today that this is my last fight. I've now officially retired. And I do recall all my career saying when I do, I'll never come back. I've spoken to a trainer, Johnny Lewis. And like I said, I turned the fingers on, and I think I've had enough. Fennec tried to channel his combative instincts to rugby. He found the playing field a poor substitute for the glory and prize money of the ring. So despite his fragile fists, Fennec picked up the gloves once again. I'm more determined. I've, I think I'm more mature. I've learned more. I'm more settled within myself. And I feel I know where I'm going. Fennec is a step away from a fourth world title and boxing history. A win at the Mirage won't gain defending champion Nelson a new title, but it could put him on the path to more big paydays. I'm going to return my title back and look forward 
to meet anybody like uh, Gideon Cesar Chavez uh, uh, and, the light, and the lightweight champion, you know, Whitaker, you know. This is what uh, I'm waiting for now. Nobody in the world fights like I do, and I, we can go through a lot of fighters. And, um, I mean, if you sit down and watch some tapes and, and watch them closely, nobody can cut the ring off like, like I can. And I believe that when Azuma Nelson steps in the ring with me and I make him fight, I know that he'll fight. He's a champion. He's a, he's a great warrior. And I know that he'll fight, but for how long is another thing. He never faced somebody like me before. And this is going to be his first fight, his first time facing somebody like me, you know. And I'm going to see how how much how much uh, sharks he can take from me, from first to twelve rounds. So this is the this is the time uh, he'll prove he he he'll prove himself, and I'll prove myself who's the best. I believe my physical strength and uh, me being on him all the time will create weaknesses and will create openings for me to to turn into weaknesses and I mean that's what you've got to set uh, out to do in every fight. You've got to make your strengths uh, become your opponent's weaknesses and you know, I'll be doing that. I'll be working very hard from the outset and I've just got to keep tidy and I'm sure that you know belt number four will be coming home to Aussie with me. And in the words of tonight's promoter, this is the land of opportunity and without a doubt Nelson and Finnick are looking to make the most of this chance. Once again, let's go to ringside and here's Steve. Okay, thank you very much, Jim Hill. And in the truest sense, these are warriors, Azuma Nelson and uh, Jeff Fennick. And this one really has all the ingredients of a slugfest. This is the one we're, we're really waiting for is the quality fight of the night. You'd have to go back in the illustrious history of African fighters. You've got to go all the way back to Dick Tiger to find a hunter a determined hunter of the kind that you have in Azuma Nelson. Now, his knock at 32 is he no longer has the legs. He's got the guile, he's got the technique, he's got the punch, but he can't stand anybody moving. As Pernell Whitaker proved, he just outslicked him. However, tonight, his good fortune is he's fighting Fennec, who doesn't move. Yeah, well, Nelson, as you point out, is 32. He's almost 33, just a little bit away from the age of 33. And as far as Fennec, he's got the chronic hand problems. Does that balance things out? Does that neutralize the situation? Well, where, where, where it turns in the favor of Azuma is what he needs is a guy that stands still and fights. That's what Fennec does. He doesn't know any way but straight ahead. To go either way is, is like a new world for him. He stays straight ahead. But in doing that, he's got such a devastating punch. He's been putting people away but destroying his hands. Now, it's kind of a race. Which goes first, the Zuma or, does, or do, do the bones and the facial tissues go in Fennec? If there's an advantage, it's to Azuma who is fighting just the kind of fighter he wants. Both of them explosive punchers. I make this the best fight of tonight. And a victory tonight would really boost the earning power of Azuma Nelson or Jeff Fennec. Let's take a look right now at the tail of the tape, see how they stack up. Nelson, as we said, turns 33 July 19th. Fennec just turned 27 at 5'7". Fennec with a two-inch height advantage. Nelson 130 pounds. Fennec 128 and a half. And a two and a half inch reach advantage for Jeff Fennec. To the rules. These are WBC rules. Ten point must system with three scoring judges. No standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. And here comes the thunder from down under. Undefeated Jeff Fennec doesn't really need a robe tonight. It's hot. Rated number one by the WBC, the biggest fight attraction in Australia, yet perhaps the best kept secret in boxing. National hero in his native land tonight making his American debut, trying to become only the fourth fighter to earn four different world titles, Ferdy, along with Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, and Roberto Duran. I think the re reason he's the best kept secret is that he is in the smaller weights. They're not shown as much. Here, there's only been shown on television twice. This is the first time that he's come to the United States to fight. So, like Barry McGuigan, who came to Ireland, he finds himself in the late afternoon sun of Las Vegas. Will it have an effect on him? And it's pretty safe to say this is the biggest fight in Jeff Fennick's career.
And now the mighty warrior out of Ghana, Africa, Azuma Nelson, making his sixth title defense, WBC Super Featherweight King, two-time world champ who has been on top for seven of the 11 years he's been pro. And Ferdy, like his opponent, this man is worshiped in his homeland. He's worshipped in, in boxing every day. From the time he came here and fought Salvador Sanchez, I was in the garden that night, the most thrilling fight I've seen for a substitute fighter to come in one of the genuine ring greats on the way to immortality. Salvador Sanchez gave him everything he could possibly get. One thing you get, great technique. He's a great technique fighter, but a punch to go along with technique. So he is still at the top of his form if you don't move with him. And despite the fact that he comes in the champ, the odds are even, again, age, a key factor. We're set for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship. Azuma Nelson and Jeff Fennick. Let's go to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor of the international participants in our next featured bout, at this time I ask you to rise for the singing of the national anthems of their respective countries. First on behalf of the challenger, we have the national anthem of Australia. Welcome in the ring to lead us, David Cazalet. Australians, all oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free, with golden soil and wealth for toil, a home is girt by sea, a land abounds in nature's gifts, a beauty rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, oh, let us sing, advance Australia.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, in honor of the defending champion, please remain standing for the national anthem of Ghana. And to lead us, welcome in the ring, this is Smith Archer. God bless a homeland, Ghana, and make our nation great and strong, bold to defend forever. The cause of freedom of our right. Feel hot with truth, humanity. Make us feel us cherish honesty and help us to resist oppressors through with all our strength and might forevermore. And help us to resist oppressors through with all our strength and mind forever more. Thank you very much to Smith Archer. Well, fans, our next bout is one of our featured events as we present the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council President Jose Suleiman and the supervisor Peter Stuckey. Introducing the officials as appointed. The judges at ringside, Miguel Donate, Dave Moretti, and Jerry Roth. And introducing the referee in charge of this bout, he will be giving instructions after the introductions, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. This is the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my right, the challenger fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing black trunks with white lettering and coming all the way from Sydney, Australia. His weight this evening is already 128 and one half pounds and his fine record is 25 wins. No losses and 19 wins by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the number one super featherweight contender by the WBC. Welcome, the three-time world champion, tonight making his debut on American soil, the undefeated Jeff Fennec. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, is the defending champion. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with red trim and hailing from Accra, Ghana. His weight is an even 130 pounds. His outstanding record includes 33 wins, only two losses, 25 wins by way of knockout. He is the two-time world champion tonight, defending his WBC Super Featherweight title. Welcome the fighter known as the mighty warrior, Azuma Nelson. Here's your referee in charge, Joe Cortez. Fennec. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. I don't want any low punches. Watch your heads. Keep me a clean fight. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. We're getting set for round one, scheduled for 12. A little kiss on the cheek there for Jeff Fennick from his longtime trainer Johnny Lewis and Joe Cortez waves him together. Here we go. Azuma Nelson in the white trunks and Jeff Fennick in the black. Nelson's style, he is a slugger, very similar to that of Julio Cesar Chavez, will wear his opponent down with an accumulation of body punches. Meanwhile, Fennick, very aggressive, likens himself to a young Roberto Duran, but unlike Duran, does not have hands of stone for it, more like hands of bone. Well, they're fragile, but you can see what we talked about at the top of the show. Fennec will not give you motion. He will stand right in front of your challenges. He tells you, I can hit you harder than you can hit me. That's a bad equation when you're talking to Zuma Nelson, who has got howitzer hands. 
Nelson describes himself as a combination of Ali and Frazier, skillful boxer as well as a ferocious puncher. Fennec too, right, get him out. Get very him out. rugged, ferocious style. His hands are actually misshapen with protruding knuckles, and he is very vulnerable. Now he's gonna have a protruding jaw if he sticks it out like that. He just got hammered by Zuma Nelson. Rough stuff going on. Joe Cortez right on top of the story. Joe Cortez out of New Jersey. Oh, big left there, glancing blow by Nelson. Nelson cannot complain that he doesn't have a target in front of him. I keep repeating, it's awesome to see a guy standing right in front of Azuma Nelson. Azuma Nelson has a great many more tricks and techniques than does Fennec, who is, fights on courage and raw power. Nelson says Fennec's a good warrior, but this time he's bitten up more than he can chew. He said he's going to vomit. Azuma, very graphic, Ferdy. Well, we will see. It's the first guy to get in that good shot that may take this oh, fight away oh, because it. right now they're throwing bombs. Oh, we got, we got. Come on. And it's only round one. That left snapped. Fennec's head around. A man whose courage has never been questioned. Jeff Fennec comes straight ahead. He wants this. He wants a brawl. He's going to get it from Azuma Nelson. He's undefeated. 25 and 0, 19 knockouts. His last fight, January 19th, 1990. Fourth round knockout of Johnny Colvin in Australia. But he hasn't fought much in the last couple of years because of the hand difficulty. Two years is a long time to be off. A lot of ring rust, although his hands should be well healed in two years. Even took up rugby for a while before getting back to boxing. Nelson's last fight, March 16th. Fourth round knockout of Daniel Mustafa in Spain. They're trading heavy, heavy body blows right now. Hard shot by Zuma Nelson. Made Fennec wave in the breeze. A right by Nelson that tagged Fennec in the head. No question about it. He felt that. He felt that all the way down to his legs. Dip Fennec. There's a spin bugger, he's got the spin bugger. As you can see, precious little coaching in the corner of Fennec. Let's take a look and see if we can catch that punch. It hurt Fennec. He's volleying away, but look how open his head is. And those two, but look look at his legs. Whoops. He just does a little sort of spaghetti rumba there. You just can't volley like that. Look at his head, wide open. Here comes the hook, here comes the other hammering hook. The cost of gambling on a body attack. Round two. This is for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship, currently owned by Azuma Nelson. His sixth title defense. All right, bring out, bring out, bring out, bring out. Azuma, the son of a tailor. He's also become an influential businessman. He's one of the largest trucking company owners in Ghana. Great combination by Nelson. Those had some zip to them. And now it's Nelson that's showing his technique in motion. He's moving around. Fennec trying to stay in front of him. This is the boxing expertise of this champion. Oh, he got hit. Nelson off balance and Fennec looking to take advantage, but could not. At the technique that I speak of is the motion that Azuma has still got in the 32-year-old legs. He can't keep up with a Pernell Whitaker who can, but he can confuse a guy like Fennec who wants you to stand still and fight. Fennec, a bubbly, charismatic former street fighter, extremely popular down under. He usually fights in front of sellout crowds of 15,000 or more in his homeland. Fennec has not learned his lesson. He went to the body again, leaving his head wildly exposed, and back came Azuma with that hook. Didn't have the same effect, but it's there. Fennec's trainer, for he, Johnny Lewis, says Fennec is the most loyal guy in the world who would die to save a friend. But he can also be the cruelest, most terrifying, most vicious person alive. Inside the ring, I hope he amended. Well, most boxers are that way. Most boxers are nice, 
most of them are kind people outside and almost gentle people outside inside the ring. It's something different. You can't find a nicer guy than Azuma Nelson or Boza Edwards from Africa either. Same kind of guy. Inside, devastating. Africa has produced its great champions, the Stick Tiger. You mentioned him. David Little, Poison Cote, Ayuf Kalule, and Cornelius Boza Edwards, and Azuma Nelson in that category as well. Second round, a little bit lighter than the first round in action because Azuma has chosen to give him a little motion. Make him work a little bit for those shots. Combination by Fennec, missing. Nelson looking impressive here over the course of the first two rounds. Fennec showing a little bit of that um, Aussie street fight. He, he didn't wait for that break. He just went right into it. He's from Sydney's tough inner city, Marrickville. The son of four Maltese migrants. Good, good motion by uh, Azuma Nelson. He put in three or four hard shots and then sprung away before Fennec had a chance to retaliate. The wind has died down considerably. It was gusting up to 30 miles per hour during the Riddick Bow fight. But it is still quite warm. It's almost 90 degrees, I'd say. I would say that that's cool for Zuma Nelson, who just seems to be enjoying this outing and almost having his way with Fennec. You got it like that, baby. Control and defy all the, any time. You fresh, you think fresh, you actual fresh. Everything you fresh, okay? This is a kind of bullshit guy. This is nothing for you. Okay? That's a voice of Buffalo Martin, who also has a lot to do with Julio Cesar Chavez. He's got another great little jewel, Control, all the and a zoom and else. Okay, every every second, hit your fly. Well, that's less instruction Beautiful, and a lot of exhortation. This is my guy, man. God damn it. <laughs> He really doesn't have to use bad words because Azuma's already mad enough without the exhortation. Okay. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go. It is round three, scheduled for 12. The WBC Super Featherweight title on the line. Azuma Nelson. Fanek getting nowhere with defense decided to just kind of out punch Azuma and got more in return from Azuma Nelson. Although Fanek has got to fight. That's got to be his defense. He's not a good defensive fighter. Fanek's anger at the world tamed by his trainer Johnny Lewis. A soft-spoken songwriter who taught boxing at a neighborhood youth club. Solid left there by Nelson. There's the best punch by Fennec all night. That's the best one. There's another one real hard. Right, that, one, that one shook Azuma. And the crowd feeling that maybe Fennec had Nelson on the ropes. He didn't have him on the ropes, but he certainly wobbled him. He certainly wobbled Azuma. Azuma's in a defensive stance on the ropes, taking everything that Fennec wants to get. Fennec continues to press the attack. Big turnaround round here for Jeff Fennec of Australia. But also missing wildly. Digging into the ribs is Fennec. Now he goes upstairs. He's missing a lot, but a lot of those okay, are landing. Watch the guys. Watch the Come on, work out of there. Now back comes Azuma Nelson. And that's what you call fighting off the ropes. Four or five hammering shots from Azuma Nelson. But Azuma has been taking a pounding as Jeff Fennex is taking this round. Who's ferocious in close fighting in the corner just above us. Some monster punches. You don't need the rest of this <laughs> of this ring because they're in about two feet square and they're not moving. Look at the action. They've been in this corner for over a minute. Again, Azuma in a little bit of trouble. Oh, 
And Fennec continues to be the aggressor. But he's paying an awful penalty coming in. He is winning this big, but he's getting hit an awful lot. It's Fennec. And now there's blood all over the eye of Fennec. Fennec is cut. Let's get to his corner. Make no water. Sorry. Give him a drink while I'm doing this. Give him a drink. You got a drink, Peter? You feeling good, sir? Drink, yeah. It's all right, Joe. I've got it, mate. I wouldn't put him out of it. You have a drink while I'm here. You feeling good, sir? Just mm. mouth, please. Spit it out. Peter, want plenty of Vaseline, Let's mate. Let's see that good Peter. shot that Fennec landed that turned his fight around right there. And you can see it buckled uh, Azuma Nelson. He wasn't fighting with the same kind of brio after that. There it is. Look, look at what happened to his legs just then. His knees just gave way. Now watch the action. Subsequent to that, for a minute and a half, they stood there and did this. What punishment each man took. And let's see if they can pick up where they left off. It is round four. I think that cut is more on the nose than in the eye, but his whole facial tissue seems to be getting all uh, body. There seem to be two little cuts. There's going to be a lot of red blood in this fight. Fennec undefeated, 25 and 0, 19 knockouts. Nelson, 33 and 2 with 25 knockouts. His only losses to the late great Salvador Sanchez and Colonel Whitaker. Well, Boza took the first, uh, sorry, Azuma took the first two rounds. Fennec big in the third. And Fennec looking extremely confident. Again, he's backing Nelson into the ropes. Same spot again, 30. Same spot. Blood all over the nose and under the left eye of Jeff Fennec. Again, Azuma chooses not to move off that spot. He must like it. He took a hammering there in that last third round. As if there's a magnet above us. Cortez is saying fight your way out, but actually, what more can you ask for these two guys than to fight? They're not tying up. Again, Azuma chooses not to move away. Uh, break up, break up, come on, get on, go. Uh, come on, let me hit on the break, don't hit on the break, let me hit on the break. Cortez warning, don't hit on the break. Again, Azuma stands still. Now Fedek measuring Nelson out. <laughs> come on, work out come on, your hands are free, let him out, come on, work out. Fennec is certainly intimidating Azuma right now. Azuma's just not the offensive fighter that he was in these first two. Maybe he's hurt worse than we think he is. He certainly is oh, not giving him motion nor Watch getting out to Watch where out he can have his superior skill come to run. His, oh, out, this is what we go. want. We're in the trenches. This is what Jeff Fennec wants. Some bullying tactics here by Fennec who has really turned this around after losing the first two rounds. Now uppercuts with the left by Nelson but not phasing Fennec. Except the cuts are getting worse. They're under the eye and the nose. Good, solid punches by Fennec. And now comes Azuma Nelson with a hammering attack to the body, going up to the head and landing. Cortez a little bit too much into this uh, exchange. These two guys don't need anybody right now. Fennec's face beginning to fall apart. Come on, your hands are free. Watch out. Watch out. Come on, your hands are free, guys. Come on. But he is inflicting punishment on the body of Azuma Nelson in the meantime. He's landing two, three to one, and impressing the judges. He's on the offense, but look at this. That oh, was Nelson. He turns him around. And back and comes Fennec. And back comes Fennec. What a display of guts on the part of both men. Watch your head. Watch your head, guys. When's the last time you saw that many uppercuts in a row? An incredible amount of punches yeah, being thrown. Me, wow. <laughs> Suzette Charles standing by with a five-time world champion. Suzette. Hi, I'm here with Julio Cesar Chavez, who was scheduled to fight tonight, but you had an injury last week in training. How does it feel to not fight tonight, and what's next? ¿Cómo te sientes que no puedes pelear esta noche porque sufriste una herida? ¿Y qué es lo que te espera próximo? Me siento muy triste, pero pero va, vale más mi salud que que que, que pelear y voy a, a, a pelear el, el día 14 de septiembre. 
He says he feels very sad, but his health means a great deal more to him than any kind of a fight. And what he will be doing is fighting September 14th here at the Mirage. All right, thanks very much. Right. Back to you, Steve. Thank you, Suzette. No worry too much in the road, baby. No worry too much in the road. What is it, Tasalta? Barco. They're talking about Terence Ali as the prospective opponent for Julio Cesar Chavez. But back to this fight right here. It is round five, and it has lived up to its billing. Well, it's an even fight. First two rounds for Azuma Nelson, and the next two for Fennec. But they were very, very close rounds because don't believe for a minute that he inflicted a lot of punishment and didn't take any. He took an awful beating from Azuma Nelson. Here's a novelty. They're in the center of the ring. Well, so long as you don't get next to this magnet that we have here in this corner. It's time for a breather. It's time for a breather. They here they and here they are again. Fennec on top of Nelson. The same deal. Three straight rounds like this. Whoever thought of the term in the trenches was thinking of this when they made up that term. And in this case, perhaps in the phone booth would be appropriate. Cortez, a veteran of many fights, saying, watch the head, but he's letting them fight. He's very close to both men. All right, come on, your hands are free, guys. Come on, your hands are free. Fight out of there. Let him out. Let him out, Kaleem. Let him out. No rest for the weary. Cortez right on top. If they tie each other up, there's no rest. It's all punches. Thundering right hand by Jeff Fennick that got through. All right, guys, watch your hands inside. Both of you guys. Come on. And the in-close fighting rages on. And we are now trying to see what's going to happen with the heat and the condition. Actually, it's not, it is not very hot here right now. It is nice. The breeze is coming up. The shades come up. It should not be a factor. What should be a factor is the two cuts that Fennec's got. And they get worse. Here we go. Again, hard hammering shots by Fennec. But Nelson keeps coming back. Oh, work out of here. Come on, your hands are free. The difference on, is that the judges perceive one as the offensive fighter and the others do. Now look at look at the rhythm of Azula Nelson. And back comes Fennec oh, faster. Fennec like a machine gun. Ooh, nice hard hammering shots. But here comes Fennec back with more. Oh, work out of here. Come on, your hands are free. Come on, watch those elbows. Come on. He looks like he's wearing out. Azuma Nelson oh, does Fennec. There go. Come on, and that is usually go, Nelson. Nelson's strategy to accumulate punches and then go in for the finish. It is perhaps the 32 years that are showing on Azuma Nelson because he is beginning to take a pounding. Right? Even his arms are starting to lower. He is becoming a target. Final seconds of round five. It has been non-stop punching. <laughs> and standing by for the main event in his dressing room, Mike Tyson getting ready to meet someone twice for the first time in his professional career, like Razor Ruddick hoping it will not take him another seven rounds to get the job done. Tyson, the number one rated heavyweight for Evander Holyfield's title, of course, the former undisputed heavyweight king, and probably the most recognizable sports figure on the planet. And he is pacing. Those are awful moments before. You just want to get out of here and do it. And if you start watching somebody else's fight, it's no good either. So you just got to kind of sweat it out. Although, if he watched this fight, it would serve as inspiration. <laughs> He might get tired watching this fight. Yeah. Seconds out. The mighty warrior getting set to do battle with the thunder from down under again. Round six. You better start thinking of some way to turn this around. I, I have him just slipping back one round. He's now 48 to 47 or three rounds to two with Fennec ahead. Of course, that is entirely unofficial. Combination by Nelson, but having no effect. No, but, it, but at least he's not getting pounded in the corner. 
The round has just started, Ferdy. The <laughs> magnet is being revved up. Wild miss by Nelson. Nelson looks tired. He's getting sloppy and tired. And who wouldn't be after that three rounds of pounding in the corner? On the other hand, Fenich looks fresh. Fenich looks like this is what he does for a living. And coming off two tough rounds, the first two rounds. He really has turned things around. The cuts, no factor up to now. Great corner work has stopped the cuts. He's not even bleeding right now. Good heavy movement, too, by Fennec, able to elude those punches. Cortez says no holding to Jeff Fennec. Not that much snap in the punches of Azuma Nelson right now. He could be laying a trap. It's not punching. He's not punching hard. And Nelson's eyes bloodshot. Past the midway mark, round six. A Action breather. Not as heated. Yes. A breather round for both fighters. Oh, there he is to the ropes. Let's see if he moves off. Nelson just trying to get a second win, but Fennec trying not to let up, looking to apply the pressure. Right there, Azuma should have circled away and into the middle of, of the uh, ring. Up, bring up, he shouldn't, once he gets around the ropes, just get away. Like right now, don't stand there, get away. Get in the middle of the ring. Ooh, nice hand by, right hand by Fennec. No effect, but nice one. And these are now pity pat punches by Nelson, having no effect on Fennec. He's either tired or he's trying to lull him into a hard punch. But they don't, they seem sloppy. Now using pushing tactics, Nelson. But again, having no impact on the hard charging Fennec. Solid right to the head by Fennec. A flurry to the head by Jeff Fennec. Fennec again picking up the pace. And he is in great shape. Should Azuma Nelson be expending his energy, bouncing up and down, when he had been so exhausted? That was a borderline round in that. Uh, Azuma Nelson was winning all along, and then Fenix came in with better. Let's go to the corner. Very proud of you, mate. You're not in this bloke, you? It means so much to me. Want the towel, Peter? In this space time, he's going to put everything in a big left hook in this wheel, okay? Rinse first, take that John. Yep. I want to have a drink now, keep the fluids down, mate. It's enough, Peter. <laughs> Not too much, Peter, don't force it down like that. Sorry. Feeling good, mate? Move the body shot. Yeah. Move the body shot. And roll him. Prison, prison, prison. Come on, come on. Let's go, Asuma, baby. I and a champion in his own right, Michael Air Jordan. Everybody's idea of a hero. Leading the Chicago Bulls to the NBA title recently. Now round seven. Arrested Azuma Nelson should now begin to, to start boxing out in the middle of the ring and away from those ropes. No particular instructions in either corner, just a little encouragement. Fennec's corner seems to think they're in command, and they are close. It's a close fight. He could be ahead by one round or even by, along about now. Fennec, three-time world champ. His first fight on American soil, trying to become only the fourth fighter to earn four different division of world titles, joining Leonard, Hearns, and Duran. Now, this, this is what they call a go-figure fight. Here's a guy that hadn't fought in two years. He looks like he just fought six weeks ago. Here's a guy that's 32 years old, and you can't tell whether 32 is too old for him right now. He, he's certainly not as fast as he was when he began. Those three rounds on the ropes have taken an awful lot out of his zoom and And apparently, those two years of rest have been positive for Jeff Fennec. A right hand by Jeff Fennec that stunned Azuma Nelson. Well, they said he was a warrior. He's every bit of that. Yeah, he has taken a lot of punishment. And here he goes again. Jeff Fennec on the attack. But this time, he uses the other corner. 
Am I glad to see him over there? Finally, I get to see what's happening. Oh, I got that. Come on, you're on the street. I got that. Fennec again, oh, turning it on. Oh, we got it. Oh, what day is this time? Come on, guys. Oh, we go. Many of those punches are penetrating. It's not as if he's not getting hit either. It's it's a give and take with Fennec just landing more and harder punches. What's amazing is they're butting heads. It's amazing that there hasn't been a big cut on either man. Nelson, a stationary target at times. Fennec is landing to the head of Nelson. Fennec opens up and lands with a right. Those are glancing blows off the shoulder by Nelson. Azuma's just laying traps, but they just don't close. He's laying traps for hard punches that don't land. In the meantime, he's eating a lot of leather. Now the fire is even because you worry too much. You understand? Eh? No worry no more. Uh, dame agua. You understand, Azuma? You be the guy like she while you walk. Walk. Well, this is hard work, baby. Okay? Let's go. You, you well, you walk this, you be you, this guy feel like shit. No worry for nothing in the corner. You fresh all the punches. <laughs> And in the VIP sections, uh, Warriors in their own right, there's Chuck Norris. And you can see behind him, Bruce Willis with Demi Moore. And of course, Butch Lewis without a shirt. Let us not leave out the Warrior, Butchie Lewis. Round number eight, scheduled for 12. They're battling for Azuma Nelson's WBC Super Featherweight title and Jeff Fennick in the black trunks since the end of the second round has been the man in charge. In the corner, Azuma Nelson is told, this is slipping away from you. It's still a close fight, but it's slipping away. It's got to be you first. Stay out of those corners. Nelson trying to set up the right with the left jab. But Fennec is right there and has no problem with it. And Azuma has lost the snap in his punches. What was there through the first three or four rounds is, are now just pillows coming out. He's just not landing that hard. He punched himself out over those first two rounds and then Fennec took over. And uh, Nelson has absorbed a lot of punishment. Again, the bullying tactics by Fennec. Azuma must stay on the run. He cannot go to the ropes. Nelson has exerted a lot of energy under this hot desert sun. And he's 32. And so far, no signs of any hand problems in terms of Jeff Fennec. Well, if they are, he's certainly a stoical about pain because he's thrown him with everything he's got. And the cuts, I repeat, are no factors. Great job in the corner. The cut man is also Johnny Lewis. Fennec. Fennec never runs out of gas or evil intention, and there they are on the ropes again, and it's Phoenix round again. Again, Azuma doesn't move away like he should. They should be telling him that in the corner. Get off those ropes. When the referee breaks you, use the referee. Get between him and the fighter. He move away right then. He didn't. Now he's back against the ropes. 
What an outstanding exhibition here by Australian Jeff Fennick. Having his way now with the champion, Azuma Nelson. And very light on his feet, dancing around. Nice inside uppercut by Azuma. Not enough. The first solid punch landed in many rounds. The main event coming up next, Mike Tyson versus this man. A good look at Donovan Razor Ruddick in his dressing room behind the scenes here at the Mirage as he awaits Tyson for the second time in about three months. His brother, his manager, Delroy Ruddick, taking the punishment there. Razor, the number two rated contender for the heavyweight title. And as that wise old philosopher Yogi Berra once said, it's like deja vu all over again. Personally, I think he should be punching Murad Muhammad yeah. instead of Delroy. Oh. Murad's a better target. That's uh, Richie Giacchetti would like that to do that. <laughs> Momentarily, uh, Ruddick will take that anxiety-filled walk. Another fighter of some note. Thomas, the hitman Hearns from Detroit, the Cobra. Comes off the impressive win over Virgil Hill. And wants the sixth win against Bobby Chez. Interesting man, Tommy Hearns. And round nine. Let's see if Azuma Nelson can reach back. He's got to do something better than he's done because Fennec has been in command. Even though it's close enough on points that it's still within reach, but he's got to have something impressive going. He has a Zuma Nelson. Let's watch. A lot of dancing around by Nelson, expending energy. He's got to do something to keep this guy off him, to get him to trap on the ropes. He has not been able to solve Jeff Fennec. What seemed to be a tremendous advantage for Azuma that Fenix just stands in front of him turned out to be a disadvantage. Nelson really on his bicycle now, but so far not getting anywhere as a result. Fenix just waiting for his moment. Azuma Nelson's punches, as I point out to you, watch them, they're pillow punches, they're old man punches. They're, they don't have that zip anymore. He's a dangerous man. He may be husbanding his energy, but right now, he is not punching with the same authority as Fennec. Fennec rated number one by the WBC, but on the threshold of taking the title away from Azuma Nelson. I just cannot count Azuma Nelson out until the 12th round. I mean, I have seen this guy come back and win so many times. Joe Cortez of New Jersey, the third man in the ring. But Fennec has lived up to all the billing I've been hearing from Australia and New Zealand. All the people down here tell me this guy is great. And so far he has been today. The only Aussie ever to hold more than one world title. Hey, if they had him in Gallipoli, they might have won that. That's right. He became a world champ in only his seventh pro fight when the IBF Panama title back in 85. Again to the ropes. He's got Nelson on the defensive once again. Nelson trying to battle his way out. But hitting nothing. But hitting nothing. They did a superb job with those cuts on Fennec's face. They have. We keep mentioning it, but you have to. He had such, it looked like such trouble at the beginning and nothing, nothing. Not, not a bit of blood. Very soft punches, if you can call them that, by Azuma Nelson. No energy punches. Well, Fennec has to be tired, too, but holding his own. Fennec looks like one of these wind-up dolls that's going to do this all night long. A human windmill. Yeah, it's like those batteries that add the batteries. That was after the bell, and that really irked Fennec. But it was difficult to tell. Really tough to blame Nelson. It sort of came midway. Yeah. Mate. Let's listen. Did that. We're getting picked after the bell. We've got him, mate. And Jeff, we've got to work, mate, the next two. So this is a tenth. 
and I agree, mate. Keep that energy all there. Don't let him bring you on the big one, mate, in temper, okay? Let's take a look at that after the bell action. Now that bell has sounded and the punch went on. Now Fennec can't believe that he got hit after the bell and the best fighting of the night happened as it so often does after the bell. And in the words of Johnny Lewis, you got him, mate. To the ears of Australian Jeff Fennec. The bell sounding, but Nelson is not yet ready to resume. I think they're looking for the mouthpiece. It's buried in the bucket. And Nelson says, let's get it on regardless. And Cortez is trying to hold things off. I have never seen anybody think that inept. I have never seen. They look like they're fishing for crabs in the bucket. Very bizarre. Very. He just said in Spanish, look in your pockets. The guy said, no, I don't have it. So the great disappearing mouthpiece has uh, befuddled all these people. Now they're trying to say, well, what happens now? He says he fights without it, I think. I, no, the, the, this was not lost during the round. Some quarterman took it and in his nervousness put it in his pocket. And that was Buffalo Martin. They found it. And we are ready to continue. Round 10. The case of the disappearing mouthpiece. Very unusual. Well, Azuma got uh, some more time to uh, get ready. I think that probably helped Azuma, made him mad. He had to put the mouthpiece on with all the funky things. Oh, oh, Cortez got hit by accident by a Fennec left. Cortez can take a great punch. <laughs> We've seen Cortez get hammered before. He takes good. It's his body shots that he doesn't do well with. We have seen a little bit of everything here in this fight. What is left? Nelson showing some pizzazz here. Yeah, he's, he's finally showing a little bit of snap, but it may be just too late. It's we're in the 10th round and Fennec is on a streak. Looks like Nelson will need a knockout. He's going downstairs and up, but Fennec once again off. Oh, oh, dirty stuff, dirty stuff by both guys, but Fennec rubbed his laces all over the face of Azuma Nelson. Things are getting tough here, folks. They, they said this was a tough street fighter, and that's what this is. Jeff Fennec is some kind of tough guy. They said he would have been a big hero had he been on television. I can tell you, he would have been a big hero here if he fights like this. He's been on a couple of times to the United States, but it's the first time he's fighting in North America. And, of course, with a quality opponent in Azuma Nelson, who is getting handed to him. And a chance to get some big money fights if he should prevail here tonight. Back to the to the ropes. If you noticed, there is where Fennec. Not once has Fennec been against the ropes. Not once. It's always Azuma taking punishment against the ropes. And that is the story of this fight. Ever since the end of the second round, it has been all Fennec. exchange in the corner but Fennec landing most of those blows back comes Nelson with a combination to the head and Fennec is making contact well he's punching 20 and 30 times before Azuma gets uncracked with one punch. I mean, that, that last series was a huge amount of punches. First time Zenik okay, has back, felt the ropes at his back. Oh, oh! What a shot! I mean, you gotta cover football to be able to, to describe that one. How about a body tackle? Well, I'll tell you what, that, that could disqualify you, and if he was hurt and couldn't continue, okay. it would be very interesting.
Let's take a look at this. I just can't believe what I saw. So he goes over, but look. Yeah, this is a rugby a move. And, uh, you know, he could have claimed to be hurt there and bought a lot of time and a lot of argument. But such is the warrior nation of Azuma, he shook it off, went back, and takes the lashing, tongue lashing of his corner, who is unhappy that he is losing this fight. Round 11. This is for Nelson's WBC Super Featherweight title. And it is beginning to look more and more like Azuma Nelson just may need a knockout to win here. Fennec in total command. Fennec has been the aggressor. Fennec has been the man that lands three, four punches to one. When you talk about ring generalship, it's as if Fennec came up with the expression. Again, Fennec equal to the test at anything that Nelson throws at him. No, again, again I point out to you the soft nature of Azuma's punches. At 32, it perhaps time to think about something else. They just aren't there. That is not the Azuma Nelson I'm used to looking at. He is not punching with authority. This could be the decline of an era. Azuma Nelson, two-time world champ, former WBC featherweight champion, currently the... WBC Super Featherweight King. He'll be 33 July, 19th champion for seven of the 11 years he's been pro. What an outstanding career. A decent, honorable man, but tonight he is meeting a ferocious man from down under. Relentless is the word that you have to apply to Jeff Fennec's attack. Let him clean, let him clean. Fennec's been waiting two years to show off his skills in the United States. He's got Nelson backing up again. And buckling. Backing and buckling. The consistency of Fennec is what is so impressive. It, it started early third, it hasn't let up. It, it's, it's almost as if we're in the third round. It's the same type of strength, the same type of energy, the same type of punching power. This has been an amazing exhibition of willpower on the part of uh, Jeff Fennec. He has imposed his will on a Zuma Nelson who's caving in. Fennec continues to be on the attack. I need feel like Maravillos, okay? Last round, baby, I love you. Okay, I love you, this is win this round. Agua. This is the last final round, last final round. Champ, you're possible to do everything, okay? You're the master here inside, okay? Agua. Hey, baby, that's the last one. Three minutes. Oh. Okay? Masawa. Well, let's look at this determined action by Fennec. What's the difference in punching power? He's right on target, and even when he misses, he misses with such force. Azuma, 32 years old. Looking at the end of the road as a younger man is punching himself. Here we go, they touch gloves round 12. Only five of Fennec's opponents have heard the final bell. So that is some tribute to Azuma Nelson, but he is going to have to do something really big here and knock Fennec out. And he seems to sense it. He's going with everything he's got. And Fennec comes back in frenetic fashion. Fennec seems to love that better than anything.
Fennec has, caution is not a word in, in Fennec's vocabulary. Somebody hasn't told him he's way ahead here. I mean, it's, he's fighting like he's behind. Really, all he has to do is stay away, but that's not his style. Oh, this man knows only one thing. What courage and what determination and what force for Jeff Fennec. I thought it was going to be the fight of the night. So far, it has been. Fennec coming forward most of the fight. And some good head movement there by Fennec, showing fine defensive skills. And again, you can't say enough about the cut man, Johnny Lewis, doing a superb job with Jeff Fennec under the left arm. And here we are again in our corner. Sounds so romantic. <laughs> Well, it's appropriate. It was this way most of the fight. Maybe it'll end this way. Bring it, bring it, bring it, Come on, Lego. Overhand right by Nelson. That miss. He is going for the bomb. No question. That's all he's got left now. And it doesn't intimidate Fennec. He doesn't want to get away. He wants to stay right there. Now he's backing Fennec up, but Fennec comes right back. It's going to take a tremendous counterpunch, one of those lucky punches to stop Fennec. And it doesn't appear that Azuma Nelson has the power to carry that out. Oh, we've seen just about everything in this fight. Anything's possible. Well, if this is the end of Azuma Nelson's career, he's had a long and honorable run, and he has been a fighting gentleman. One of a long line of warriors to come out of Africa and he's going out in style, right in the corner and punching as hard as he can. He will still be a hero in his native Akragana. And let us remind you that we are talking very cockily, but we don't have the judges' scorecards. Fed it all over Nelson. Azuma fighting from memory, but it's now history. What a fight! Sensational action here at the Mirage in Las Vegas. The crowd appreciating the efforts. Particularly of Australian Jeff Fennick. I have it 117 to 111 or nine rounds to three. I think that may be a little bit too ample, but certainly you have to think that if you didn't keep score, the winner of this fight is Fennick. One never knows in Las Vegas, but even here, this has got to be a clear-cut win for Fennick, who has covered himself with glory. It figured to be an exciting fight, and it was an exciting fight. You know, this guy starts even at the beginning. Look, look, look at this. Look at this replay. Even at the beginning, Fennec has or the round. Fennec says, "Hey, I'm not going to take it easy. I'm coming right after you. This is going to. This kind of hell is going to go on for three more minutes." And at the very end, he almost knocks out Azuma Nelson. What a warrior is this, Jeff Fennec? Riveting shots by Jeff Fennec. Look, this. Let's slow it. Slow your mind down and start looking. Look at that shot. It almost dropped uh, um, Azuma Nelson. It's like a non-stop punching machine. Like this guy's got some kind of batteries that don't wear out. Nothing. And remember, folks, this is the last round of a savage fight. Nelson and this is the last one. I promise you it's the last one. But look at that. Now, what keeps this guy up but maybe the largest hot heart in Africa? I mean, that, that should, he should have gone. I'm sorry, but this guy is one of the great champions of Zuma Nelson, and if this is his end, why, it's fitting to go into the hands of a warrior like Jeff Fennick. That is an incredible display by Azuma Nelson. Not going down under that barrage by Jeff Fennick. We are set for the decision, and here is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, before I read the decision, we've all seen an outstanding 12-round title fight. No matter who the winner is, they both deserve a big round of applause for their efforts. Azuma Nelson and Jeff Fennec.
Well, fans, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a split decision, and here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jerry Roth scores the bout 115-113 for Jeff Fennick. Judge at ringside, Miguel Donate scores the bout 116-112, Azuma Nelson. And judge at ringside, Dave Moretti scores the bout 114 to 114, a draw. The decision is even a draw. Oh, goodness, that is mind-boggling. And look at the reaction by Jeff Fennick. He is in total disbelief. No way, he says, it's a draw. So the champion, Azuma Nelson, getting the benefit of the doubt from the judges here. And Freddie was right on the button. He said, you never know here with these judges in Las Vegas. Unbelievable. And even Azuma Nelson must be wondering how he was able to come through with the draw here. He can barely stand. Well, he's standing alongside the fight doctor. Ferdy Pacheco. Well, that's got to be easily one of your toughest fights. Frankly, I had you losing that. That was really tough. That's right. That's right. The guy is very tough, you know, and uh, uh, he's always coming in and uh, sometimes he's pushing me, holding me, you know. So uh, sometimes if I'm in the corner, I can get a chance to I mean, go inside. But know? those corners, why did you stay on the corner? This guy was taking advantage of you on the corner. Yeah, why did you move? I love the corner, you know, because I want him to stand up pound for pound, you know, but the way he fight, he lay on me all the time, and, you know, you, you can't get a distance to, I mean, hit the... All the more reason to get out and box. You go out boxing him in the middle of the, of the round, in, in the middle of the ring. Why didn't you box him? Yeah, why take you know, that punishment? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm too conditioned, you know. I don't feel the punches, you know, and uh, I just want to uh, set him up, and I mean... Right. Did you so, feel he fought a dirty fight? A little bit, you know, not like uh, the way he fought in Australia, you know, he fought a little bit. Sometimes he, <laughs> he just uh, put my head well, down. Well, listen, you know? I, I was saying I think this might have been your last fight, but apparently you're thinking to keep on going because you got a draw here. Well, uh, we won it. Well, I want to, I want to, I want to Carl, give him. you're brave. I want to give him one more chance, you know, uh, because I want to, I want to, I want to prove myself that I'm the best. Very good. Yeah. You've always been a great champion, Excellent. and you're an honorable man. Thank so you so much. we hope we see you again, but not too many more times. <laughs> and, and back, back to Steve at ringside. Thanks, Freddie. A courageous Azuma Nelson showing tremendous heart, retaining his title. Making his sixth title defense, the WBC Super Featherweight Champion, but a stunning decision. And Jeff Fennick uh, just cannot believe how the judges saw it here, making it a draw. And we're trying to line Jeff Fennick up. This should be most intriguing to see what Fennick has to say as he is getting set alongside the fight doctor. Once again, here's Ferdy. All right, I just so told Azuma Nelson that it was a great fight. I thought you won it. I had your head, but. As the man standing next to you, promoter Don King, just said, this was one of the great fights we have seen. No question, your courage is unquestioned. Your boxing ability is encouraged. I, no question, I never saw a guy with the energy you've got. Now, Don King is one of the premier promoters. You just said something to me. Yes, I said, this is too good a fight. There is no loser. This fight has got to be a return match. And Jeff you just Finnick said, let's do set. another 12 right now. Yeah, I'll do it now. You'll Put do the gloves on, let's do it now. You, you thought you were ahead of this fight. Are you was ahead. Well... In the last round, you fought so tough that it looked like you thought you were desperate to win, but you were I'm, actually ahead. I'm desperate to throw punches all the time. That's my that's my plan. I don't I don't taper off. I don't try to slow down because I'm winning. I'm not like that. I, I want to win right till the end. I thought I'd done that. Let me tell you, you have only fought in American television twice. This is one of the premier promoters in, in television. Had this guy been fighting on television in America with that style, where would it be in popularity? It would be soaring, but we're going to make sure it gets it in that style because we're going to let them play the delayed tape. But I'm going to tell you something, uh, Jeff. You fought excellent. There is no loser. I told everybody in the country that will listen to me that we're going to be the vintage fight of the evening, that you were a Tasmanian devil, a thunder from down under, that you were coming for a war, and a war you fought them. Can't nobody question that. All right, 12 let's... complete rounds of fighting. All right. I'll come back and fight him in, in two months. As long as I'm the main event here and I fight here, I'll, no problems. Jeff, I'm sorry that you had this unpleasant event, but let me tell you, one of the hearts in America of the boxing public don't go home with your head down because you did fight a wonderful fight. Let's see you again. And now, let's go back to Steve. Thank you, Ferdy. 
Tough former street brawler Jeff Fennick now 25-0 and 1. And let's go over to Suzette Charles. Hi, I have Bill Cosby and Tony Danza. What do you think? This was a controversial ending. Who do you think won, won the fight? I thought Fennick won it by three points. All right. I thought the last round, uh, when he landed that big right hand over here off the feint, was the uh, telling uh, punch. I thought Fennick won the fight, he too. But, uh, you know, Zuma fought a great fight. He showed a lot of, uh, lot of uh, will. Uh, he's been around a long time, and so uh, maybe somebody... Uh, thought well of that. What do, you, what do you think about the main event? Do you have any predictions of who's going to win? Uh, I have the little guy in three rounds. <laughs> <laughs> I, All hope, right. I hope you're right, but not in three rounds. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, Thanks I, a lot. I, I just think that Richard Steele was correct when he stopped it last year. Because the last three rounds before the knockout, he had his hands down. He was just kind of breathing a little too heavy. You know, tonight they showed a replay in the, in the, in the hospitality suite, and, you know, Razor was the happiest guy in the whole place. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Back to you, Steve. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, you, Suzette. Well, we just saw a controversial decision by the judges here in Las Vegas, Jeff Fennick and Azuma Nelson fighting, and I do mean fighting, to a draw. Most of the folks here thought that uh, Fennick, a former three-time world champion, uh, had prevailed. It was a non-stop fight from start to finish. And Jeff Fennick, like a human windmill, was just unbelievable.